Hello class, my name is Rochelle Hartley and I will be doing the journal article review from the journal Contemporary Issues in Technology and Teacher Education, the site journal for 2019 on the article Just What Online Resources Are Elementary Mathematics Teachers Using? Uh, just a brief overview of what we'll be covering in this presentation. We'll go over a quick introduction. Uh, we will also be looking at a case study. So we'll be looking at the purpose of the case study and what specific research questions we want to have answered. And then we'll have a look at the main ideas and topics. Then we'll go ahead and look at the conclusion. Introduction. So as we've transitioned into online learning environments, there has been an increased demand for online tools to help us improve online learning. Uh, in the past, while teachers were teaching in face-to-face -face classrooms, they were merely just curriculum deliverers. Uh, now that we have online or uh, hybrid classes, teachers have the opportunity now to be more creative with how the subject is taught to students, mainly because the school district actually has no tight restrictions on the teachers anymore. Purpose. So the subject math tends to be viewed as a diff as difficult since it depends a lot on formulas and theories. However, in this article, we'll have a literature review which is focused on identifying and documenting the elementary math teachers' preferences or habits for choosing these online tools they use in the classroom. And here we have four research questions that drove the main purpose of this study. So the first one, the first quest research question we have here is. How often are elementary teachers across the United States searching for and using mathematics activities found online? Which websites they're mainly using? How they're using, how they're rating the common criteria for selecting the math activities found online? And to what degree does the elementary teacher's years of experience influence each of these questions? Main idea. So in a research conducted by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the results show that 91% of teachers use websites to find inspiration for lesson plans and classroom ideas. So the Scholastic website being the most popular as 80% of teacher participants used it. That was followed by YouTube, which was actually used by 71%, then Pinterest at 69%, Discovery at 64% and pbs.org at 61%. So these websites were at the top for educators for pre-k through fifth grade. Interestingly though, uh, education related items are the second most highly searched resource on Pinterest. So during the study, uh, pre-service teachers stated that they chose online activities for curriculum application, student-centered interest, and assessment of students' learning. Another research conducted by Sawyer and Meyer actually concluded that pre-service teachers tended to determine the effectiveness of an online activity based on how many pins it had on Pinterest instead of evaluating the content themselves. But ultimately, the more popular it is, whether positive or negative, then the more sales for that activity. And as we are all aware, not everything on the internet is true, since basically anyone can post activities online. So in this case, we have two categories of online resources. We have trustworthy and not as trustworthy. To determine if an online resource is trustworthy, it's important to note if the author has been fact-checked, essentially. On the other hand, not as trustworthy sites usually do not have a content monitoring uh, capability. An example of a trustworthy site would be any government education site, such as the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, or NCTM, while the not as trustworthy sites would include Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Teachers Pay Teachers. So earlier I stated the four research questions in which this study is dependent on, and in an effort to choose the sample group for the study, um, they used the simple random sampling method in which a Qualtrics survey was sent via email to the entire population of math teachers and about 583 elementary math teachers responded, many of which were kindergarten through fifth grade teachers with about zero to five years experience on average. 
During the study, in response to the first research question, the teachers were asked if they search online for elementary math activities, and all the teachers with 0 to 5 years experience said yes, along with 99% of teachers with about 6 plus years experience. The teachers also noted that they would search online and use online resources on a weekly basis, and it was also found that experienced teachers were just as likely as newer teachers to use online resources. In response to the second research question, which asked the teachers where have they searched for these online elementary math activities, about 89% of teachers reported using Teachers Pay Teachers, 74% of the teachers reported using Pinterest, and the other 68% used Google. Only about 28% of teachers with 0 to 15 years experience selected using state affiliated websites compared to the 43% of teachers who had 16 plus years of experience. On the other hand, uh, teachers with 0 to 15 years experience use state affiliated sites significantly less. Um, for the third research question, teachers were asked to rank the importance of criteria when selecting elementary math activities online, and the most important criteria was actually alignment to standards, followed by perceived student engagement and level of difficulty. The lowest criteria was price, visual appeal, and user rating. However, teachers with less experience ranked the price as more important than more experienced teachers. Conclusion so a quick recap of the results from the case study. Uh, the elementary math teachers with internet resources are using activities found online in their classrooms. Teachers Pay Teachers is usually the most commonly used website to get the online resources. Price may actually deter novice teachers from using certain materials and not as trustworthy sites are being used by teachers instead of them going ahead and fact checking. Uh, due to the fact that teachers are apparently using these not as worthy, not as trustworthy websites, there needs to be a peer review process where they consider the quality, potential for misconceptions, invalid math concepts, and low levels of cognitive demand. The future of this project would most likely include analysis of other subjects, as well as the study of different online resources, and how we can best support the teachers going forward. Thank you for watching.